What if I told you the reason you're not getting accurate colors out of DaVinci Resolve when you export it is not because of your monitor? So I see this issue come up a lot when a lot of people say that their export colors are not the same as when they're editing in DaVinci Resolve. And today I'm going to show you how to fix that. And while I did mention in the beginning that you don't need the most expensive monitor, you do need to start off with a color accurate screen. So right now I'm using an ASUS ProArt PA278CV. So it's a 27 inch 2K monitor and it's not really that expensive. In fact, you can actually go even lower if you want to go to like a 24 inch 1080p monitor, that will still work great. But one of the things that you do need to look for is that you have to make sure that the specs say that's 100% Rec 709. Now in the display settings, when you go to your monitor, you have to make sure that you set it to Rec 709 mode. So by default, the monitor probably comes in like their standard mode. You want to make sure that you switch it to Rec 709. And then you also want to go down further into the settings and change your gamma. If you are doing a lot of work that is meant for broadcast, then you want to make sure that your gamma is set to 2.4. But if your footage is going to be on the web, so for things like YouTube or Instagram, you want to make sure that your gamma is set to 2.2 instead. Next, you're going to need an IO box. So the way that you actually get video is that your GPU, whether you're on Mac or Windows, it uses the GPU to send a signal to your monitor, but because you are using your computer's GPU, you're not getting an accurate signal. So what an IO box does is it uses the IO box to send a signal to your monitor and it bypasses whatever your operating system does to it, which is usually what makes the colors look a little bit different from when you export it versus when you're color grading it. Now there's a ton of different IO boxes that you can get. For DaVinci Resolve, you do have to get a Blackmagic specific one, but the Blackmagic ones do also work with Premiere, Final Cut, or any of the other popular video editing softwares. So your best bet is to just get a Blackmagic one so that you can use it for all of your other programs if you do use those. So there's a huge variety to choose from. As you can see, this massive box is the Ultra Studio 4K Extreme. You have a gajillion SDI ports. It can do things like timecode, plug in audio, all of that. But don't worry, you don't have to get that expensive one. So the cheapest option is one of these. So this is the Ultra Studio Monitor 3G. So it's a very tiny box, it's really cheap. It has one SDI output and then one HDMI output, depending on what your monitor uses. And then the other side is a Thunderbolt 4 port that just plugs directly into your computer. One of the downsides to the monitor 3G is that it only outputs in 1080p to a reference monitor. Don't worry, even if you're shooting 4K, you can still export in 4K. It's just that your reference monitor will be shown in 1080. However, you might already be using a 1080p monitor, so that's totally fine. Even if you were using 4K, color accurate work, you don't technically need the sharpest image, so you could be fine with downscaling the 1080p. And then again, when you export it, it'll still be full resolution, so you don't have to worry about that. If you did want to output in 4K to a reference monitor, the next step up would be the Ultra Studio 4K Mini. So that will be able to output 4K to a reference monitor. So as you can see right now, I have the bottom screen as my main DaVinci Resolve timeline. And on the top screen, I have a video clean feed. And you can get there by going to Workspace, Video Clean Feed, and then choosing your second monitor. And while it does give you a clean feed, you still want to be using an IO box just to get the most accurate signal. Even if you have used Mac Display Color Profiles for viewers, and automatically tag Rec. 709 scene clips as Rec. 709A, your final output is still being affected by your computer's GPU, and you don't want that. So I just plugged in the IO box in my computer. Again, one side is just the Thunderbolt 4 port, and the other one is just using HDMI connected to the IO box. Now to install the software for it, just search up Blackmagic Download. You can go to the Support Center, and then you can go over to Capture and Playback. And this is the one that you're looking for, which is desktop video. And then just choose the latest version and download it. Once it's downloaded, you can open it up. And you can see right here that my Ultra Studio Monitor 3G pops up. You can click on it to change your settings. If you want to pause the video really quick, you can just copy my settings here. One second to take note is video playback. It says display black output when not playing. If you are using an OLED monitor, you do have a chance of burn-in if your screen displays the same image for too long. So it displays black output when not playing, just make sure that when you're not playing a video, it turns black so it doesn't burn into your monitor. Now if you had DaVinci Resolve open, make sure that you close it first just to let it reset. Now if you go to DaVinci Resolve on the top left, Preferences, and then go to Video and Audio I.O., you can see right here, Ultra Studio Monitor 3G is now selected. Now right now my reference monitor up here is still using the video clean feed and you can actually tell that because when I alt tab to another screen, both screen switches. And the thing about the IO box is that it only works with DaVinci Resolve. So if I go over to Safari or any other window, my top screen should not change. 
And right now that's because this monitor is also connected via USB-C. So I'm gonna switch it over to HDMI. So I just went over to input select, I changed it to HDMI. Just give it a second to reload. And now you can see I have a clean feed here, but when I alt tab, you can see that this top screen still stays the same because this is running off of the IO box now, which means that the only thing you can get input from is DaVinci Resolve. It is a little bit annoying how this works where if you alt tab, you can only still use your reference monitor for DaVinci. So the way I have it set is that I have HDMI connected to the IO box for the reference monitor. And then I also have the monitor connected to my Mac using USB-C. So if I want to change it back to just using the reference monitor as part of the computer itself and not part of the IO box, instead of having to unplug the IO box and then plug in the monitor, I just go to input select, switch it to USB-C. This will change it so that it's not using the IO box anymore, it's using the computer. And then when I alt tab, you can see it's back to using just what the computer does. Basically, you just want to set your monitor to have two inputs, one to your computer, one to the IO box, and then you can switch between the two very easily. Now, like I mentioned, because you are running the IO box, you are going to get the most accurate signal and it's going to bypass anything that your computer GPU will do to your image. After you choose that, head over to project settings. If you head over to master settings and down here, it says video monitoring, you can change your video resolution. So right now, my settings are being overwritten by the timeline settings. That's why this shows up here. But if you have a fresh timeline, you can actually change your video resolution. So I'll show you in my timeline settings, but it's going to be the same thing. So you go over to monitor and you can change your video resolution. Now, because this Ultra Studio Monitor 3G only does 1080p, if I try to change it to 4K, you can see my reference monitor goes black and it says failed to set the video mode on the video IO device. That's only because I tried to output a resolution that's higher than what the monitor 3G is capable of. If you did get the Ultra Studio 4K Mini, you can do 4K here. So I'm just gonna go to timeline settings, monitor, change it back to 1920 by 1080 and click OK. Now you want to make sure that all of your other color settings are accurate for what you're trying to do. So if you go over to the bottom right and hit the project settings, you go to color management. My color size is DaVinci YRGB. For timeline color space, you want to change this to DaVinci Y Gamma Intermediate. And the output color space, you want to change it to Rec 709. Again, if you are doing it for web work, you want to choose Rec 709 Gamma 2.2. If you are doing broadcast, you want to do Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. So I'm gonna choose 2.2. Now you might be wondering why I didn't have it saved here. It's because I changed it manually in my timeline. So if I go over to my final V1, timeline, timeline settings, and go to color, you can see DaVinci YRGB, DaVinci Y Gamma Intermediate, and then Rec 709 Gamma 2.2. I just like to manually change it because I might not always be doing web work. So this is something you want to check every single time. If we head over to our color grading tab and head over to IDT, which is our input color space transform, you can see our input color space is Sony S Gamma 3 Cine, input gamma Sony S Log 3, because that's where I shot it at. Output color DaVinci Y Gamut, output gamma DaVinci Intermediate. I just like working in a bigger color space, so we want to transform it to DaVinci Y Gamut. But the more important setting is when we head over to our ODT, so our output color space transform. Again, the input color space is DaVinci Y Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. But the output color space should be Rec 709 Gamma 2.2 because I'm doing it for web. So basically, you just want to match everything. So because this project is used for web, my monitor is set to Rec 709 Gamma 2.2. My project output color space is set to Rec 709 Gamma 2.2. And then my output color space transform is also set to Rec 709 Gamma 2.2. The final setting is when we export. So if we head down to the export page and go to advanced settings, color space tag should be Rec 709. For gamma tag, this is where you can make a choice. The thing about this is that even if you make your reference monitor as color accurate as possible, someone else's phone or computer might be set to a different gamma or a different brightness and theirs will still look a little bit different. So the most you can do is try to get it as good as possible and hope that it doesn't shift too much. So sRGB is used for a lot of web and mobile devices, so I like to export an sRGB. You could set it to gamma 2.2 because that's what most of your output color space was set to. So you can play around with either sRGB or Gamma 2.2 just to see what works for you. But if you are doing broadcast work, set your monitor to Gamma 2.4, set all of your output color space to Gamma 2.4, but also export in Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Now one final thing is if you are doing a lot of reels. So I'm gonna head over to a different timeline. This is my reels timeline. So you can see right now, this is what a vertical reel looks like, which is pretty normal. But if you look on the top screen, you see this one by one format. 
and that's because this is set to 1920 by 1080 so it's actually scaling it up just to fit the full screen if you head over to project settings i go to master settings you can see my video resolution for video monitoring here it's set to 1920 by 1080 so that's what's controlling this screen up here the reference monitor but for some reason they don't have any options to choose vertical so i can't actually show this screen in 1080 by 1920 so workaround for that is to go to your reel go to timeline timeline settings go to output uncheck the use timeline settings for output scaling set the output resolution to 1920 by 1080 now you can see your reference monitor up here this is set to a vertical screen but if you look at my main screen down here you see these black bars so this is kind of what the vertical reel looks like but it's actually being shown in 1920 by 1080 so it's actually putting in these black bars itself just to fill up the space. Then it can output a vertical reel to your reference monitor. So you can color grade from your reference monitor like this, but you want to make sure that you don't export it like this, because if you export it, you'll actually see these black bars in your export. Basically, once you change that setting, do all of your color grading on your reference monitor. When you're done, just before you export, go back to timeline settings, go to output, and just check use timeline settings for output scaling again, and they'll look normal in your main DaVinci Resolve window. Your reference monitor video will be scaled up, but don't worry, that's just for the reference monitor. When you output it, it'll actually look like what it does down here on the screen. And that's pretty much it. This just shows that you don't need the most expensive monitor just to get color accurate work. It's actually just about the IO box, and then making sure that all of your settings are properly set for your export. If you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments below. I'll happily answer them for you. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to see more photo video content, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.